passengers the boarding started. And we are back again. Hope you guys had a nice uh, little restroom break. Got your snacks ready for today's flight. Yeah. Because <laughs> what is going on, beautiful, beautiful people? Welcome back. It's your boy, Blue, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, 2020. And we are here in the CRJ900. As you can see, she's currently being loaded up, or actually uh, offloaded with bags from the previous flight that you guys didn't see. But um, after they're done, they'll load up bags for our next flight. The uh, special thing about this flight today is that we have a brand new sound pack. I have not flown the CRJ. I actually went back and looked uh, on my YouTube channel, and I don't think I've flown the CRJ in actually two years. So let's see if this new sound back sound pack by boris uh can revive this crj not that it's like anything you know extremely wrong with it it's always been a decent aircraft it's just a crj <laughs> you know uh so it is what it is but so uh, let's do a quick walk around here oh look who's walking around up there and he's gone he walked right into heaven Poor guy. Oh, okay. All our passengers are walking in. That's what we do here, is we fly people to heaven. We fly them to the afterlife. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's a GSX problem, I think. Uh, we're currently in... Wow, everybody's just walking up there, aren't they? Alright, cool. Well, we're just gonna focus our attention over here on the ground crew. What's up, sweet dreams? Welcome to the stream. Data, welcome aboard. Captain Edward, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well, man. Uh, if you're, wherever you're watching from, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Hope you're having an amazing week so far. Excited to go flying once again here in Microsoft Flight Sim. What's up, Joy Bufar? Welcome to the stream as well. Welcome back, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh, does the Phoenix run worse for you? I can run PMDG at Ultra, but Phoenix runs bad for you. Uh, it wor works fine for me, but I also have a NASA computer, so I am honestly not the person to ask about that anymore. But the PMDG has always run better than the Phoenix as far as performance in FPS. So um, I believe that is still true today. So anyways, aircraft is being offloaded and uh, I'm gonna turn music off here in a little while and we will do the engine startup and prepare for our flight. We are currently in Cincinnati, Kilo Charlie Victor Golf KCVG. And those people are still walking up there into heaven. Um, and we're flying over to New York today, flying out to Newark, New Jersey, technically. It's technically New Jersey, but it's one of the New York airports is where we're going today. So that's the plan. But good to be back. It's nice to change it up and fly something other than a 737 or an A320. And so that's why I'm excited about flying the CRJ today. XP72, welcome back to the stream, man. Hello, hello. I know, bro. I was just saying, I haven't flown this plane in at least two years. So uh, if I'm a little rusty, uh, you know. It is what it is. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get her down. We'll get there. A to B is the plan. How we, what happens between, you know, it is what it is. All right, so let's go to kill the music and let's see what she sounds like. Um, uh, I am be, gonna be flying this uh, flight for Delta Virtual as well. So you may hear some sounds come from that. I will make sure to point out what sounds are coming from Delta Virtual and what sounds are coming from the Boris sound pack. Um, and Good if you're, evening, ladies and gentlemen. that's on of Delta, Delta Virtual. Our global partners, welcome on board your Delta flight. 
As you're making your way to your seat, we kindly ask that you please step into your row and out of the aisle as quickly as possible to allow those passengers behind you to make their way to their seat as well. If you're traveling with a larger roller board, please place it in the overhead bins, either wheels or handles first on either side of the aircraft. Keeping in mind that the overhead bin space is shared space, so if the bin directly above your seat is already full, please go ahead and utilize the next available space. If you brought in a second item with you, such as a briefcase, tote bag, laptop bag, backpack, you can go ahead and utilize that space under the seat in front of you so that we can utilize that overhead bin space for your larger bags without having to check them plain side to your final destination. Feel free to utilize your mobile phones, tablets, and e-readers while we're here at the gate. However, once we close our boarding door, you must please place these items into airplane mode or turn off your cellular service. So we'd like to thank you all for choosing to fly Delta. Welcome on board. Welcome aboard. Today is Delta Fly Service from uh, Cincinnati to Newark. Again, guys, just reminding you that that sound you just heard was not a part of the sound pack. That is from uh, Delta Virtual Smart Cars. Again, this flight is being flown for Delta Virtual. So if you hear any like announcements that are specific to Delta, that's where that's coming from. Anyways, now to the actual sound pack. Let's get the aircraft powered up. We'll start off by making sure our nose steering is off. And we go up to the top and get our battery turned on. Let me go ahead and bump the sounds up a little bit more. Because I want to personally hear them loud and clear. So. Battery on. And we go straight to APU. So APU power. APU door is open. And APU starts. Let's see if it has any sounds for that on the outside. Alright, APU's firing up. See it says a veil right there. We can I guess we could bypass the uh, the ground power. We could just do uh, do that as, as well. That's good. Alright, so APU's up. We'll turn on the hydraulic pump 3A, which is the second one there. We'll get our nav lights on and logo lights on. No, we are this is not a part of my pilot's life career. I do not fly for Delta. Uh, in my virtual pilot career, it's just a separate thing where I fly for Delta Virtual Airlines. Um, so we'll get emergency lights on. Do you want to deboard Uh no. Go down here, get our IRS. Oops, that's the parking brake. Good thing we have chalks on. <laughs> uh, nav lights, not on, lights, not nav, IRS turned on. That is good. And now we'll go ahead and dive into our FMS. Go to uh, position initialization. We are currently, as I said, in Cincinnati, which is a uh, Kilo Charlie Victor Gulf. And then we'll go to the next page. We'll grab the FMS position like that. Back to the previous page, drop it into set position. And that now we'll go over to flight plan. Uh, let's get fueled up though. Right, we'll do it after, we'll do it after. Uh, so we are Kilo Charlie Victor. So we're gonna have to do this manually because I don't, I still don't think the Aerosoft CRJ has like seamless integration with Simbrief, like a lot of the, the newer aircraft. So I think you have to go and download the Simbrief file, which I always hated doing. Um, we just download the Simbrief file in order to uh, get the flight plan straight into your FMS. So we're gonna do it all manually because I don't want to go through all that. So uh, we're going to Newark, so Kilo. Come on, mouse, work with me today. Kilo. X-ray, X-ray, Echo, sorry. Echo, uh, whiskey, wait, what is it? K-E, how did I forget it? Wow, brain fart, where the heck? It's K-E-W-R, yeah. I'm <laughs> like, why, why am I not remembering this? Uh, CJ, this is um, the Boris sound pack for the CRJ, and I believe it works with all the CRJs by Aerosoft. All right, cool, so that's good. 
Um, now we will go ahead and just put our flight plan in. We'll go ahead and do that right now. So departure arrival. We are expecting runway 818 left out of Cincinnati. So we'll click on that. And then the departure is going to be the Bingo 5. And what was the transition? It might be a washer. Where is my internet? Uh, it is indeed washer. Washer will be a transition. That's good. And we'll hit uh, execute that. Back to flight plan. Over to the next page. And now we'll do our two. So from bingo, from washer. Washer should actually already be in there. I don't see it. But we'll do Durette. So Delta, Oscar, Romeo, Echo, Tango. Durette. And then we'll hop on the Juliet 584 Airway. Juliet 5. I feel like it's been so long since I've actually done a, a flight plan by hand. We always got all the, we have all the, 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 the toys now that just do it for you and automatically import it. So it's like been a while. I, I feel like I remember it just fine, but it's just been a while. It's, it's I don't know, it's an extra step that we have to do. All right, so that's it. We'll now go to our arrival. So we'll click on that. Uh, Yeah, execute, please. Yeah, departure, arrival, index, arrival, and then we want, it's going to be uh, ILS 04 right, I guess Zulu, that's left actually, no, not that one, not that one, how do I cancel modification, yeah, 4 right, the uh, Kilma, and then our tra our actual arrival is the Foxtrot Quebec Mike 3, so FQM3 via SLT. And then execute that as well and then we'll go back to our flight plan and we'll see if all that lines up together go to legs should be washer to direct yep that's good and then we have vectors which is fine all right cool i think it's all in here and the way we like it sweet all right so now let's go ahead and jump back to um, the flight plan page, go to our perf initialization page, and we don't have any information in here yet, so let's go take care of that. Let's go to our uh, EFB. I still think this EFB is pretty pretty dope. Only thing it's missing is the sim brief importer. That's it. <laughs> What's up, Ryan? Welcome to the stream. Am I a fellow CRJ driver? No. <laughs> uh, we're just doing this in the simulator. There's no automation in this CRJ. What's up, sweet dreams? Good to see you, man. Oh, Bingles as in Cincinnati Bingles. That I went right over my head. I I'm not that deep in the football. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> uh, anyway, so fuel. Fuel today is going to be block fuel of eleven thousand six hundred and seventy-six pounds. So I'm gonna go click here, delete that. I'm gonna take exactly what dispatch gave us. So one one six seven six. Enter. Uh, for passengers, we are carrying 89, so, uh, not souls, but passengers on board, um, not including the flight attendants, so hit enter there. And then for cargo, I believe we'll just leave that as is. Yeah, we'll just leave that as is. That's plenty of cargo, probably more than enough. And that's all we need. So we got our, our table here on the right. And we will hit set payload and simulator that will then actually set the payload of our aircraft in the sim so that way we're actually using the right numbers and it will copy the perf information over to the fms and we'll initialize the fuel as well so that's good all right let's go look at our fms now and see so yeah it's now been put in there you can see how the passenger waits you can see the fuel the cargo only thing missing is the cruise altitude and the cruise altitude we have is thirty-seven thousand feet we go type in Foxtrot Lima or flight level 370. There we go. And that's really all we need. We don't need an alternate cruise altitude. We're good. Put execute there. Go over to VNAF setup. That's good. Perf initialization. That's good. And I think we're good to go. Uh, what up, Avgeek? This is the Aerosoft CRJ900 for Microsoft Flight, Plan uh, Flight Sim that we are flying right now. Let's go over to the perf page and we do a flex of 46 today. Invalid, well, never mind. no flex today. It's so weird, some days it works, some days it doesn't. What about 76? It likes that, sure, <laughs> it likes that. Uh, all right, so the rest of that looks good to me. 
Yeah, all right, cool. So, um, let's go to MCDU menu. That's not what I want. Uh, MFD menu. I'm gonna put this on VNAV and we'll hide airports. This is all for uh, our, in, our screen over here. And now I believe we are basically good. We wouldn't arm our thrust reversers. And APU's already running. Yep. So we are honestly ready to push, guys. Let's uh, check outside, make sure the ground crew is done and completed. Yep, they're done. Go ahead and shut the doors. Aircraft. And we'll shut the aft cargo door. Uh, we'll remove the ground power unit. We're on AP power, and we will shut the front door. Nice. All right, let's clear that. We're still waiting for the IRS, though. It's going to take another... Not sure how much longer. Take a few more minutes to do that. So while we're waiting, we did get a um, kind of an IFR clearance. So we'll go ahead and throw in our squat code and all that. Let me check on that. Our squat code today is going to be four zero six three. Four zero six three. What's up, Fabian? Welcome to the stream and how you doing? Yeah, uh, I mean, we can try doing Flex 46 again, but whatever reason, wouldn't take it. What was that at again? That was under uh, MFD menu? No, it was under perf. Let's try 46 again. Nope, it doesn't like it for some reason. Maybe it's the weather or something. I don't know. Um, yep, 50. So I'll, that's close enough. <laughs> that's close enough. We'll do that. But I'm clear up to the stream. Uh, you highly recommend this plane. It's so manual and fun. It's very different. I agree, man. Like, it's not all automated. Um, and as I said at the very beginning of the stream, like, it's, you know, we've been flying the 737. We've been flying the A320s. Even the A300. And all those aircraft are very automated. Uh, and so it's, it's kind of nice to get into something a little bit more old school, I guess, you know? <laughs> so, all right. We are basically ready to push. We're just waiting for the INS to finish aligning. Once that's done, uh, we can get the heck out of here. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Let's go ahead and check our checklist while we're waiting for that. So, originating checklist, crew oxygen and mask. Let's check. All right, that's good. Uh, audio warning as checked. Electrical power is good. Fire detection and uh, fire X monitor is complete. External lights, I think we did that. Yeah, nav and local lights are on. Emergency lights are on. We'll turn our smoking signs and seatbelt signs on. That's, that's good for now. Where we at? Fuel panel, checked. Bleed air, checked. APU panel, on, off, checked. Start panel, checked. Hydraulic panel, checked. Auto and on. We gotta do that. Let's see. Gin's good. Oh, where is our hydraulics at? Oh, it's right here. Yeah, those are good. I thought I disconnected the ground power. Let me check again. Yeah, it says connected. Alright, so just All right. I. Right. Uh, the FMS wouldn't allow 76, and N1 value would be too low. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, all right, so AP panel, start panel, check, hydraulic check, auto and on, ELT is armed, cabin pressurization is checked, air conditioning checked, and the ice checked, windshield heat. I have not done that. Windshield heat set too low. I always forget where that is. There it is. All right, windshield heat set too low. Emergency lights are armed, standby compass. Check. We didn't put the weather in. Let's get the weather for uh, Cincinnati real quick. I'm also gonna hop on CTAF since there's no ATC with us today. CTAF and KCVG and uh, METAR KCVG. All right. So the uh, CTAF can be 118.3. So I'm gonna swap to 118.3. And then the winds today, guys, are 220 at eight knots. Visibility is 10. Few at 7,000. Uh, temperatures, t I already said that. Temperatures 10, dew point minus 2. And all temperature 3019. So 183. That should work. So we can go ahead and jump in here and change out our. Here, I'm just going to hide that a little bit. 
and now we can change this from HPA to inches of mercury. And that's going to be 13019 for the altimeter. Oh, by the way, IRS is aligned because now I can actually see this. <laughs> I just realized that. So yeah, I can actually see that now. That's good. All right, that's good to go. Let's change our nav source. Uh, make sure we have, it's an FMS. That's good. And our altitude, again, since there's no ATC control online right now, we'll just go straight up to 37,000, which is up there. But I was going to roll the uh, altitude now until I get to 37,000. Uh, turn packs on so you don't get cabin alts. All right. Are the packs? Oh, there they are. There we go. All right. Let's continue. You can put it here too. Three zero one nine. All right. Windshield heat low. Emergency lights arm standby compass on. Nozzle steering off. Chalk or clocks set. Uh, instrument panels, check upper pedestal, thrust lever quadrant. Let's actually check that. Alright, cool. It is in shutoff. And avionics are checked. Alright, before start checklist, guys, passenger signs on, landing elevation set. Altimeters are set, FMS is checked and set. IRS is aligned, radio and navs are set. Takeoff briefing, I guess we should probably do that, right? Uh, and I'll do that for you guys. So, real quick on screen, again, if you're watching on YouTube, you will see this. If you're watching on TikTok, you will not. Um, but I'm going to bring the charts up. They should be on. There it is. All right, charts up. So, again, guys, we are in Cincinnati, uh, which is, I don't, I don't know if it's Kentucky or Ohio. It's a bit confusing, but it's over here somewhere. <laughs> uh, we're currently parked, I think, Bravo 11, I want to say. Uh, let's see if we can pop up on this screen. There we are right here. So, we are departing on runway... 1-8 left, which is a pretty nice short taxi. Uh, we'll push back nose to the right. I'm actually going to draw on here. Oops. Can I delete that? Uh, we'll push back to the right and we'll take... Uh, we'll, take we'll just go straight out this way and take Romeo. Or no. I feel like it'd be more realistic to go via Juliet and then Sierra and then take 1-8 left right here so that's the direction we'll go for taxi after that we'll get in the air uh, again flying the bingo 5 departure uh, heading south so we'll probably do a heading of 172 which we can also set in our um, in the cockpit and then left turns left turns more left turns like NASCAR then we'll head back north to Luby and then we'll uh, transition at washer up top and then as filed um, no altitude restrictions on our departure. Nah, actually, technically, there's a 5,000 foot altitude restriction. Yeah, there is an altitude restriction. So 5,000 5, is the top altitude, but we'll just blast past that, assuming that, assuming that ATC gave us uh, clearance to um, uh, you know, no longer be restricted at that. So that's all. That's good to go. That's a pretty simple briefing for you guys. All right, well... Let's go ahead and push back and get out of here. I can't wait to hear these sounds. I right, request push back and departure. Uh, hydraulics are bottom of the middle overhead. Oh, these. Yeah, I do need to turn these on. I had 3A on. I didn't have the rest of them on. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. Thanks, because I'm They're pulling up to the car aircraft. Get our beacon light on. Locking gear.
We are ready to push. Be a nice short taxi, so won't be on the ground too long. Front row, Kenny, what's up, man? It does put you to work. It does. Uh, which airport scenery is this? Chris, this is a... Uh, is it Skyline? I have a link in the description if you want the airport, but this is uh, Cincinnati. I want to say it's Skyline, but I don't want to... I don't want to give credit to the wrong company. <laughs> it's not them. I want to say it's Skyline Simulations. I was good nose right till that. Release parking brakes, please. Brakes for this. Brakes for these for the push. Go to the left. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Now we will start at a will. Thank you so much, Eller, for the subscription. Welcome to the blue team, my friend. Welcome, welcome aboard. I got to see you, Jay. <laughs> yeah, the other aircraft in the background is super loud. I wonder if I could turn that down, like... I have control over that sound alone. I don't. Please set parking brake. Brake set, clear disconnect, show us the pin. Unlocking gear. How my speed brakes up? Alright, we're gonna wait to start the engines till they clear out so we can get a good listen. I might actually turn off AI traffic just for engine start so that we can actually hear. So I'm going to do that. So I'm using a uh, flyby wires FSLTL uh, for my AI traffic. And uh, you can now see just how. Actually, that's. That's a. Uh, that's him. That's not even my AI traffic. That's that's him. Jesus Christ. Truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed. I'm gonna disconnect from that too then. Left is clear. There we right go. Right is clear. There we go. That was loud. Alright, let's see what these engines sound like from the inside and the outside of you as we start them up. Very loud. I thought it was, uh, because sometimes the AI traffic can be super loud too. I think it's the same sounds. Let me reset my camera, get us a nice view of the engine startup. We'll start with, I think they start with engine Clear to start B engine. first. Right? I can't remember. Does COJ start the second one first or the left one? All right, let's do it. All right, boost pumps are already on. Hydraulic pumps are already on auto. Uh, let's go start engine two first by hitting the engine start. Kill it? I think I killed it. I freaking killed it. I blame the click spot. Yeah, I killed the engine. It's shutting down. <laughs> 
All right, let's try it again. Starting to. Thank you, Logics. That right, there's twenty percent. On. Here we go. That was pretty silent to me so far. And starting one. Nope, not using Pack X today. America. Alright, there's twenty percent. That sounds really good back here. On the mask, place the mask over your nose and mouth, slip the elastic strap over your head. Oh, and yeah. Normally. Now we're talking. In case of a water landing, life vests are located under your seat. Secure the vest around you and pull on the red strap to inflate it. As we prepare for takeoff, please take the time to make sure your seat is upright, your tray table is secured, and your seat belt is fastened. Thank you for your attention. It sounds really good from the back. It sounds so much better from the passenger view than it does from the cockpit. You can barely hear it, I feel like, from the cockpit, but from the front, like, you, I mean, you feel it, man. Speaking of feeling it, why is my book kicker turned off? Hold on. Okay, we have two good engines. I put the flaps down while we were looking away. And let's go to get the yaw damper and the trims. So that's gonna be down here. Also get our transponder turned on. But one, two, and three, and those as well. All right, we are ready to taxi. Brakes released. Let's go. And AP off, taxi lights on. Oh yeah, nose of steering. Need that for taxi. Hey, why can't I click on it? Nice. Here we go. Let's go. When you spool up for takeoff, listen from the cabin. We'll do. We'll do. Thanks for the hint. It sounds like a CRJ. <laughs> it sounds like a CRJ, that is for sure. Alright, let me scoot up. Let's spool a couple of times from back here. Welcome aboard and thanks for flying with Delta. We're proud to serve you and the 180 million customers from around the world that travel with us each year. Yeah, I like it. Our first priority on every flight is safety. So before like we it. depart, we'll be giving a brief safety demonstration. Again, we're using a, a f doing a Feature flight for Delta Virtual Alliance, so you're hearing sounds from Delta Virtual Alliance underneath the seat in front of you. If not you a part of the sound. Device back. in your seat. Please do not adjust your seat and ask a crew member for assistance. Please ensure all aisles, exits, and bulkhead areas are clear. Alright, let's turn the traffic back on because it As is lonely gate, out here. Make sure your seatbelt is fastened. To fasten, insert the metal tip into the buckle and yeah, adjust we'll the strap so it's low and tight across your lap. To release the belt, just lift the top of the buckle. 
If you're seated in the business class cabin, secure your shoulder harness by attaching the metal tip to the fitting on the belt. To release, remove the metal tip. Alright, be so straight ahead and we'll take zero. Please remain seated with your seatbelt. Cincinnati your traffic endeavor 116 taxi on way 18 left via Sierra Tango. In case we experience any unexpected. But a free flight that went back to the stream man. Yes, long time no see. Good to see you, man. If you guys are just joining us, we are in the CRJ 900. In addition to any crew members instructions. And we are headed to or headed from Cincinnati. KCVG. And we're headed to Newark, New Jersey. We're in New York. All Are you guys seeing that? Exit sign. However, if there's a loss of power and cabin visibility Wait, does that look is blurry to you? lights will illuminate the aisle to guide you to an exit. Please note that exit signs on this airplane identify each exit with a green symbol. Arrows indicate the direction to the exit. Locate I've been pretty good free flight deck. I've been pretty good, man. Thanks for asking. Mind, the nearest exit might be behind you. In the event of an evacuation, leave all carry-on items behind. What's up, Squared? Unlikely, Greetings from Curacao. Welcome to the stream, man. Above your seat will open, revealing oxygen masks. Uh, please do a if flight happens, from Miami, no, from New York, or, or Miami to. Yeah, that's, that's not. I'm sorry, that's not gonna happen. That's too far. That's too far. Strap over your head and adjust the mask if necessary. Not in the live stream, at least. Oxygen is flowing, so don't worry if the bag doesn't inflate. I rarely do long hauls in live streams. A water evacuation. Unlikely. It's just a very, uh, a very big commitment, a long commitment, and it takes a lot of time. If you're seated in the business class or premium select cabin, I much rather do short hops or live streams at least. But I have been doing a lot of long hauls on my own with the uh, virtual airline pilot career we've been doing. So maybe if that takes us there, uh, do one more notch of flaps. Flaps eight, it is. All right. As you leave the plane. Inflate the vest by pulling down on the red tab at the bottom of the vest. All right, flaps eight set. Thanks, man. By blowing into the tube at shoulder level. A water activated. Craig, you have the audacity to do sea out to Chicago. That was a. Additional life vest. What's that? That's gotta be at least three, four hours. Now, before we take off. Yeah, at least four hours, I think. Upright and your tray table is put away. If you're seated in the main cabin, ensure your aisle armor. The long flight, man. And in the premium select. Uh, do I have certifications like a commercial? I do not, man. Sadly, I don't. That's the dream, though. That's the plan. I want to get my private pilot license first and then uh, work my way up, get my commercial, multi engine, and then start working, you know? That's, that's the goal. And until then, we'll be here in the sim. And enjoy your flight. Thanks for flying with Delta. We will be here in the sim. All right, guys, that's where my 1A left right there. And we're just going to go straight on to take off. Oh, <laughs> turn. <laughs> All right, land lights on. Probes on. Continuous ignition. I think I'm supposed to change the gins. Oh no. What's up, Luca? Walk to the stream. All right, guys. I'm taking my eyes off chat, and so we get on autopilot here. Cincinnati traffic. Uh, Endeavor 116 taking away one eight left, parting to the north. Left traffic. Cincinnati. All right, right is clear. Left is clear. Eight. You can actually kind of hear a, uh, a wheel turning brake noise too. I'm noticing. I'm not sure that's part of the sound pack, but it sounds kind of cool. All right, we're gonna spool it up from the wing view. Let's do it. All right, set toga and max toga. That sounds pretty good. I gotta I got admit, that sounds pretty darn good. Like when this is the RJ. All right, let's go on the center line. 80 knots, our speed is alive. Are we schmoving, baby? Things quick. All right, that's good if you want. Positive rate. Kira. 
Alright, we up. Alright, a little bit of trim. Well, uh, na uh, arm nav mode. Uh, arm nav mode. And power back. Climb. Type stuff. Alright, still flying by hand, passing 3,000 feet. There's a turn coming up. Making that left hand turn. I never said a speed. <laughs> I followed the magenta line so far. Stay in the left turn. trim is needed. Passing 5,000. This thing is a rocket. Alright, speed set 250 in the climb. We'll pitch for that. Again, there is no auto throttle in this plane. This is a CRJ, folks. Alright, auto pilot on. Take a look at how she's doing. She's a little fast. I should be able to pitch for 249er. Nav. Alright, yep, she's following the flight plan. That's good. That's a good sign. It's a little bumpy too out here, man. A little bumpy. Alright. We'll let leave her to it. Let's go see how it sounds and looks outside. <laughs> Bruh! Y'all hear that? God. Guys. Guys. Yo. Y'all heard that? That is what a freaking airplane sounds like. Not none of that vacuum noise. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Not none of that vacuum noise that we hear so often uh, from aircraft when they get in the air. That is what an aircraft. Forest, great job, man. Water juices, a variety of Great job. As well as a selection of our fresh eats items and all day goodies. Beer, wine, and spirits are available. Complimentary for our first class and Delta Comfort Plus. Passengers. Sounds really good for the cabin. Cincinnati off our left wing. You can see the city down there, you can see the football stadium downtown, the river that cuts right through the middle, and there's our airport right over there, Cincinnati International. Uh, it's actually called Cincinnati no Kentucky North, because uh, it's considered to be in North Kentucky. And I believe this river might be, I could be wrong, but I think this river is the, uh, the border between Kentucky and, and Ohio, I think. I think. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, 
Let me turn it down just a little bit so I can talk. <laughs> uh, but we'll find that this screen will work best with just a light tap of your fingertip. As uh, as you heard, you yeah, the, the sounds of the of the engines are not very prominent just let a flight attendant know they are yours. in the cockpit. This, but it is when flight. you get into the cabin and you're sitting back there and you're much closer to the engines, obviously. That's where you can really hear uh, those engines screaming and. Like, I've been in CRJs many times, and, yeah, you'd have to convince me that this is not what it sounds like, because it sounds just like it, in my opinion. All right, let's do our after takeoff checklist, because I'm getting behind. Uh, APU should already be off. Uh, takeoff data good. Doors are close. Lot beacons on. That's clear to start. All right, climb. Landing elevation, fuel, TCAS, radar, land data, approach briefing. That's descent. Hold on. Climb. Fuel flow, auto, bleeds, APU, good, thrust versus off. All right. That I can do. That I can do. And we'll swap back over to 22.8 on the comms. All right, APU door is still open, so let's go ahead and uh, power that down. And we'll put this on our stat page. But oh, not that one. The uh, ECS. Huh, look at that. That's interesting. All right, passing 18,000 feet, we can now go standard on the barrel. Is there a standard button in the CRJ? I did a test flight, and I could not get it to actually... Like, you should be able to push this button to set it to standard, but it's not doing it, so I have to just manually rotate it to get to standard. It's not even working, actually. Oh, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. Yeah, same thing. Just push the standard, does nothing. <laughs> 2992. There we go. Just gonna keep blinking until forever. Alright, let's change our speed to uh, 265 for the climb. So, right now, again, this aircraft has no auto throttle. So, whatever you set in your speed, the aircraft will do its best to match that airspeed. That should be good right there. We up, baby. Press B. What does that do? Oh. Okay, it worked. Thanks. <laughs> that worked. Not very realistic, but that worked. Alright, so we're to our legs page. Alright, going towards Bengal. Good, good. So far, so good, guys. So far, so good. Do I have an aviation background? Not at all. Not at all. I learned all this from YouTube. <laughs> all this from YouTube. But yes, Boris strikes again. Um, I gotta give him credit. I gotta give him his flowers while he's here, you know what I mean? Um, he's been doing a great job in the community, uh, making sound packs for various aircraft and uh, just making aircraft sound better in general. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad. he's made. He's been working really hard. He's made a name for himself and he completely deserves it so hopefully people will uh, receive the sound pack well and uh, go out there and buy it if they're interested in flying a CRJ and honestly like as funny as sound is a big deal to me like I'm not big on making a sound pack I don't have the expertise to make a sound pack but whenever a sound pack comes out for an aircraft best believe I fly that plane a lot more because of the sound pack if the aircraft sounds right if you know it it just adds so much to the uh, the experience of flying the aircraft, you know what I'm saying? So it's so important for an aircraft to just sound, like, correct the way it sounds in real life. Uh, and sometimes, listen, listen, listen close to me right now. Sometimes you do have to exaggerate just a little bit to make the experience better. Because there's sometimes, there's some sounds that you may not hear, um... But if you pump it up a little bit more, it just, it just kind of engulfs us into the atmosphere of the plane. Today's flight plan, if you haven't just joined us, we just took off out of Cincinnati uh, and we're headed to Newark, New Jersey, which is just outside of New York City. That's where we're headed today. Our flight time was an hour and a half. Um, obviously, we just took off, so it's about an hour to go. No ATC in Cincinnati, but we are expecting to talk to uh, Cleveland center possibly and maybe it looks like there might be some atc in new york too as well as some pretty nasty weather um 
so that's going to be interesting trying to fly an ILS with this thing. So we'll see how that goes. What's up, Aaron? Welcome back to the stream. Hope you're doing well, man. Hope you're doing well. Greetings from Italy. What's up, Luca? Welcome back. It is all good. Your language is perfectly fine. Just got home from Newark Airport. This algorithm is wild. It is wild, A1. That is actually really crazy. You just landed in Newark and we're flying to Newark. That's so crazy how the algorithm works. But hope you had a great flight, man. And hopefully, I'm not sure if Newark is your home or if you're traveling there. Either way, hopefully your stay in Newark is uh, nice and, uh, and chill. Uh, why why am I not streaming on YouTube? We are live on YouTube, Tyler. Uh, just go over to YouTube, Blue Games. You should see me live. We are definitely live right now. Yeah, I just double checked. <laughs> like, oh snap. No, we are definitely live. We're live on YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, all of that. So, um, wherever you choose to watch, do your thing. Do your thing. But we are in the air now. Yeah, sounds good, man. Sounds good. Uh, I want to I wanna hear from the outside one more time. That surprised me. I was not expecting to hear that. Still climbing out, passing 28,000 feet for 37,000 feet. AVO man, bro, how are you? I ain't seen you in forever, bro. I was just thinking about you the other day. Hope you're doing good, man. Hope you are doing good. Uh, question, any tips and advice on getting over the fear of flying on that sim? That is a great question. And you're not gonna like the answer. Okay, I have a better answer than the one I thought originally. <laughs> um, I would say, get on VATSIM, make an account. For those in chat who don't know what VATSIM is, VATSIM is ATC, multiplayer ATC on Microsoft Flight Sim, X-Plane, P3D, all the major flight sims. Get on there, but don't fly. Just get on there and, like, observe. Like, go to a busy airport and just listen. You can start there, right? While you're learning on what to say, go and just listen to what they're saying. So you can get a better idea of what ATC is saying, you know how the communication is going back and forth um you can even you know watching live streams like this i mean maybe a better live stream would be a live stream that actually had atc from start to finish uh which we have sometimes but not all the time so watching that just kind of getting used to hearing the calls and knowing how to answer them back and then when you go and hop on that yourself to do your own flight i always say this i recommend you f go to an airport that's not very busy at all like for example right now as we speak I'll pull it up on screen. Um, it's not that busy. It, like, at all. <laughs> There's a few ATC controllers on, but it's not that busy. We bring it up on screen. Hold on. All right, so this is Valanta map that I have on screen. And you can see that uh, Cleveland Center is on, Boston Center is on, and DC Center is on. And so you could take off from Pittsburgh, from Cleveland from Toledo, from Detroit, any of those places. None of them are very busy right now. It's actually very slow. And the benefit of doing that is that you can take your time. Uh, you can make mistakes and the controller uh, shouldn't you know, get too impatient with you because they're not, they don't have a big workload. Um, Cleveland does have a few other aircraft in the area he's dealing with, but it's not that bad. Um, so that way, obviously make sure you watch a video tutorial, learn what to say and how to say it first. But then once you kind of get an idea of what to do, go ahead and jump on VATSIM. If you're in the UK, do the same idea in the UK um, or wherever. Pick an airport, not too busy, and just get started from there. I'm tr just trust me, once you make your first radio uh, communication, the nerves will slowly fall away. I had the exact same problem. Matter of fact, if I get on Pilot Edge, which is like the more serious version of VATSIM, I still get nervous to this day before I key the mic up. <laughs> you know what i mean so but you gotta you gotta press sin at some point um if you keep putting it off you're never gonna conquer that fear you gotta you gotta conquer that fear straight up you know what i mean so do that that's my advice to you um to get over the fear of that sim uh if anyone else in chat has 
suggestion, drop it as well. Um, you have a lot of aviation experience. Nice, bad boy. That's cool. What do you fly? What do you fly? F1 is super. Welcome to the stream. Sean Campbell, uh, you love all of the sim models. Would you enjoy being a Microsoft designer? What do you mean by that? Like designing aircraft? Probably. I would. I would honestly love to be a part of like starting a like an aircraft project. It's something I've actually always wanted to do since I've been in the flight sim community. Um, obviously, it had to be something cool, <laughs> something I'm, in, I'm 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 interested in, something I'm passionate about. But uh, I know me and uh, another YouTube creator as well. We've talked about making our own plane. We just don't have the skills to do so. So I was like, yeah, I would love to be a part of a, a, a big aircraft project and, and help like, you know, guide the process and whatnot. That'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Do you have any tips on managing the power of a CRJ since it doesn't have auto throttle? That's a good question too. Uh, and I'm probably the wrong person to ask because this is like, my second flight in two years. <laughs> um, but, I mean, you just got to watch it. Stay on top of it. Uh, the climbing part is easy. Right now, I just have the throttle and climb. If you look right here. It's in the climb detent. So it's, oops, that's not what I want to do. Uh, it's in the climb detent. So it's just going to use that power setting. I have it set to 260 or around 260 my speed. So I have this right here my speed turned to 260 and I have it lit up it's basically kind of like flight level change or any of those modes you could also use vertical speed mode if you wanted to but you have the risk of stalling or over speeding in vertical speed mode there's always that uh, how do I change this screen oh no I think it changed these I'm gonna change this screen there we go that's not what I wanted there we go. Um, but yeah, so for climb out, just use speed here. Just set your speed and put it in climb, and it'll do what you want. Uh, and then for descent, you can leave it in the same mode. But uh, oh, I forgot there's a VNAV. Let's do that. Hold on, <laughs> I forgot about VNAV. Oh, it's already on. Okay, cool. So a VNAV on descent will basically make the aircraft follow the vertical navigation track to stay like within any altitude restrictions and all that but it won't manage the speed for you so if you just leave it alone then you'll basically over speed eventually when you're descending so what you have to do is you have to take the throttle itself by hand and bring the throttle back um so just make sure that it doesn't over speed that's <laughs> there's i don't have any advice for you that's what i do that's what i do i'm using the thrustmaster uh boeing yoke that's what i'm using right now no freaking way, Ted. You're freaking kidding me right now, bro. Are you serious? We might we, we might have to watch it live on stream. I don't do that often, but I'm so excited that we might have to watch it live. Send me the link, Ted. Send me the link. Send me the link on Discord. I don't see it on my recommended. Wait, I found it. Never mind. I got it. I got it. Alright, we can't listen with sound. Oh, no. There's no release date, is there? Alright, so guys, we have in-flight entertainment coming up. <laughs> when we get to cruise, we're going to watch a new trailer uh, from DCS World that I'm excited about. So, that's exciting. Thank you, Ted, for letting me know. Thank you, man. Uh, I feel man says Mach 0.77 can be achieved with approximately... In one of 90% Avio man coming in with clutch. Thank you, man. Yes, what he said. 90% in one. Your in one is here. FYI. <laughs> right, we are all are almost to our cruise level. We're about a thousand away from 37,000 feet. Doing Mach 0.73 at the moment. Uh, you got banned for two for making two accounts on Vatsim. Should you try Pilot Edge? Why did they ban you for that? That makes no sense, Jackson. Uh, you could try it. It's not free, but yeah, you could try Pilot Edge if uh, if you're okay with flying on you know within the Pilot Edge coverage area. 
Uh, I think Pilot Edge has great service. I recommend it to anyone uh, who's serious about aviation and um, you know in real world operations and stuff like that. But yeah, I would definitely recommend Pilot Edge. And the thing too is you could always like you know freeze your account or maybe you pay for a month, use it for a month, and then maybe don't use it the next month. So you can use it as much as you need to. Uh, if you want to see a great documentary, go watch Sled Driver, World's Fastest Aircraft. That sounds interesting. Sounds like something I would watch. What up, Overkill? Overkill, what's up, man? How you doing, bro? Welcome back. Good to see you, man. Is this the same Overkill that's been showing off the, uh, you know, the old uh, Beyond ATC? Is this the same guy? I'm gonna make sure. Because I am looking forward to Beyond ATC. Matter of fact, guys, if you guys are unaware about Beyond ATC, uh, Beyond ATC is basically an ATC, like a, a offline ATC program um, that uses AI to communicate back and forth to you when doing your flights. Pretty cool. Uh, Beyond uh, Overkill, who's in chat right now, he has a bunch of videos talking about he even has a video interviewing the developer so definitely check out his uh, videos um, if you want to know more about beyond ATC but uh, I have a feeling that the release may be imminent because they just put a poll out on their discord um, to kind of gauge to see how many people are okay with it releasing now or waiting for some other features and let me actually let me bring this up because let me bring this up so beyond ATC uh, is from what I understand in a state where it's working you can talk to it with your voice it talks back to you it's working really well um, but they have not incorporated AI traffic yet and for that reason um, that may take another two to four months to complete now what they are asking is are you okay with them releasing it right now as early access and you get the you know the ATC with all the really cool voices and all this and that, but it does not integrate with AI traffic. Um, so that's that would be the state of it if it released right now, or, or, we could all just wait another two to four months or more <laughs> uh, for them to get the AI traffic part fi figured out and working. And uh, yeah, those are the two options. So. I made my vote already. <laughs> I made my vote. I don't want to sway you guys' uh, opinion on it, but I've made my vote on which one I prefer. Uh, if you want to know, I'll tell you, but I don't want you guys to, to vote based on what I'm saying. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, if you would rather wait another two to four months for a, the more complete version of it, then that is completely cool. Uh, or if you want to just have it now and mess with it now, then uh, you can vote that too. But you can do that voting um, you can you can do that voting on uh, on Beyond ATC's Discord channel. Just search Beyond ATC. I don't have the link on my thing. Uh, Marco, what's up, man? We are headed to Newark, Newark, New Jersey. Uh, it also oh Beyond ATC also supports IFR only for now. Keep that in mind. IFR only for now. Uh, Bad Boy says that documentary is about SR seventy one pilots. Ah, that sounds cool. Alright guys, we have reached our cruise altitude of 37,000 feet, and one thing I've, I've noticed about cruising this high is that you don't necessarily really have to do anything with your throttle, because you're so high up, depending on the winds, I'm going to change my speed, to Mach, so we're doing Mach 0.80 right now, it's pretty good forward speed right now, uh, what's our ground speed, oh here it is. Ground speed is 530, and we are 266 miles from our top of descent, which is going to be about 30 minutes from now. I love that feature. I love knowing that. Why is my TCAS off? I don't care. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's cool. So we're cruising 37,000 feet. We're chilling. We'll turn our seatbelt signs off. You guys are now free to move about the cabin. Man. And then as you get to the front of the plane, you don't hear that loud exhaust sound anymore. Yeah, Overkill Man just wants to give you, give you a shout out, man. Thanks for all you do, bro. Thanks for all you do, man. 
Hope to see you at Fights Mexico this year. Yeah, Fights sweet. Sweet, sweet. Ah, well, Marco, you're getting a little ahead of us there, but we can go take a look at the weather. We could take a look at the weather in New Jersey. So, again, we're 30 minutes from our top of the set, but that is a good question, my friend. Good question and good forward thinking. So, the weather over in Newark currently is IFR. This is going to be fun. <laughs> uh, winds are 340 at 10, so not too windy, but visibility is 8, and it is raining in Newark. Uh, clouds are broken at 800 feet. That's going to be fun. Overcast at 1300. And temperatures 11 dew point 08. All similar to 9906. That is the weather in Newark, New Jersey, as we're headed right now. So that is going to be fun. Uh, but ahead of us, as we are still on the departure of our flight, we're coming up to the uh, washer waypoint. And right up ahead of us, we should see Lake Erie. Yep, there it is, Lake Erie, and I think, uh, what's that airport underneath us? What airport is that? Looks like ahead of us to the right. I don't know what airport that is. It might be Akron. Yeah, I'm not sure what airport that is. Yeah, it's really weird year. It's a really weird spring. Like, it's cold. Even in Texas, it's cold. Like, it's 71 right now, which sounds hot to some of you, but in Texas, that's cold. <laughs> like, we out here, that's why I'm wearing hoodies and stuff, you know? Pretty cool, man. Nice sound pack on a CRJ. Uh, definitely needed it. I remember last time I flew it, I just, I just feel like the sounds weren't quite there. Um, so it's really good to have a sound pack that really, really, you know, makes it sound like an actual CRJ aircraft. Uh, it's not Cleveland. We're not, uh, we're not over Cleveland yet. I don't think. You know, we're not quite in. Are we gonna pass Cleveland? Yeah, I know it's not Cleveland, though. Oh, actually, you know what? It might be. Take that back. We are about to fly over Cleveland. Cleveland is right in front of us, though. Like, over there. Or is that Cleveland? That might be Cleveland right there. Right next to those triangles, those Minecraft triangles. Marco, we left from Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Let me see. Yeah, that is Cleveland. I didn't realize Cleveland was like on the... Oh, wait. That's Cleveland Lakefront Airport. KBKL. I'll need to fly there sometime. That's a cool-looking little airport. Like right there on the water, right next to the city. Let me write that down. KB... KBKL. A B K L. All right, that's cool. I like it. I like I like airports like that. It's kind of unique. It's, you have like downtown right next to it, right? And then you have a little airport, and you got the like a football stadium right there. Uh, Atticus, you've uh, landed at that little airport in X plane before. Runway is pretty small. I like small runways. Yes. You could, Boris. You could fly it from Indiana. No problem, Overkill. Catch you later. I can see you slacking on TikTok right now, Overkill. <laughs> I was just kidding. I mess with you. Uh, K E L M, Elmira. You know what? Let's turn this into a fun little discussion. Chat. What is like a fun, unique airport that you've flown to before and that you could recommend to the rest of us here in chat? 
in, in any kind of plane. It could be a bush plane, it could be a CRJ or a big airliner or whatever. I know not everybody's into flying bush, so, um, but what's a really fun, unique air, airfield to fly to uh, in any type of plane? Uh, Sweet Dreams, would I prefer a 737 or 74? Uh, I would prefer 73 only because it has much shorter flights. 747, like you're always doing long hauls. But you can't, nobody can beat the 747, right? That's the queen. That's the queen. That is the queen. Uh, Kaviv, Norway. Tromso or Vagio airports are fun. Okay, you guys gotta give me codes. Don't just say names. I need codes because I have no idea where these places. I can't even pronounce these places you're talking about. Uh, Data just pre-ordered Afghanistan map. Okay, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be looking at it that soon. We're gonna, be, we're gonna look at that on the stream here soon. You'd have to fight every inter internal urge to not go nose down. Listen, trophy husband. Listen, listen. We've all done it. Right, I've been playing this game. This game's been out for four and a half years now, and trust me, I've nosedived before. I've crashed it. I've flipped it. I've done. I've done all the things you can think to want to do with a plane. I've done them all. So, that's the, that's the thing. You know, you can do that if you want to do that. You can do that. Um, uh, but usually, my play style is to try to fly as realistically as possible and only nosedive if something happens like a failure. <laughs> you know, like if I do anything like that, is usually because. Uh, Something else had a lot of other things went wrong before that. Um, KDLH is a little inland from the Great Lakes. Cool. One time you flew an Airbus A320 into Washington DC. It was a really cool flight in International Airport of DCs. Interesting because it depend, depends on what runway you're landing on. Yeah, uh, the DC, uh, what do they call it? The uh, River Visual is a very popular um, airport to fly into in America uh, for airliners. And a lot of people a lot of streamers like to fly into that um, airport pretty often. It's really fun. It doesn't get old, honestly. Uh, Silencer24 says, Tavat, Montenegro. So it's Lima, Yankee, T uh, Tango, Victor. Very unique. Next to a mountain, which is with a localizer approach with visual fun. That sounds a lot of fun, actually. That sounds like a really cool airport to fly into. That sounds really cool. Uh, ENVA, ENBR, and ESMX. All great airport. I believe those are in Norway, right? Am I right, Clip? Or... I can't remember. Ah, Reese, welcome to the stream. Uh, Boris, you got to take a tour of the DCA tower two, two weeks ago. That's so cool. I've never done a tower tour. Tower tour. I would love to do one. Incognito Highlander says KGRR. Sweet. Mixed field. You got to find it online since it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I believe there's a scenery for it in Microsoft Flight Sim now. With uh, as as it was so. Um, yeah, actually, I like that one a lot. I've been there in the simulator before, and it's a really cool approach. And it's a really cool airport to land at. Uh, let me see. Let me give you guys a few. And then after I give you guys a few, we're going to watch this trailer. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. So a few airports around the world that I could recommend if you're looking for somewhere new to fly. So let's start with bush flying, right? If you like flying like little uh, small prop planes with big wheels, um... Let's see, you could go, oh, okay, my, I think this is probably my number one right here. Uh, you're going to want the scenery for it, but it is called Orcas Island, Kilo Oscar Romeo Sierra, K-O-R-S. It's over in the Pacific Northwest, just north of Seattle, actually just south, yeah, just north of Seattle International. It's on a little island, so it's a tiny, tiny little strip. You can land any GA plane there. It's so much fun. Love that airport probably one of my favorites in the world still to this day another one honestly a lot of my favorite airports are all kind of in the pacific northwest a lot of really fun approaches out there um let's see another one i'm gonna try to diversify it because i could just literally pick 10 like in this area <laughs> but i'm not um but one more in the area of like seattle if you were like looking for somewhere to go from there would be a place called Mears Field, three whiskey five. Again, this is a like a more of a bush strip or like Cessna GA style like place you want to fly to. Three whiskey five, Mears Field, a lot of fun in the mountains on the river. It's just super dope. Uh, moving up to British Columbia or 
Western Canada. Um, I want to say, let's see, where's that little one at? Uh, is it Cordova? No, that's not it. Valdez, it's a lot of, there's so many good airports out here. It's so hard to pick like one or two. London City is a great one. Yes, London City is a great suggestion to fly to. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to some airliner ones too. I got you. Uh, Seward Papa Alpha Whiskey Delta. Great place to fly for Bush. Um, yeah, there's a lot. I need to like make a... I might, you know what? I might need to make a video of like recommended places to fly. That's a good idea. All right, let's move on to... Let's talk about airliners, right? Um, so let's start with London City. That's a oh, that's such a good plane, good place to fly to. Uh, if you never flew there before, it's a very short runway for an airliner. It's a very challenging approach, very high glide slope. Um, very, it's actually very. It looks straightforward, but it's very tricky. Plus, it's beautiful because you're landing right in the heart of London. Um, so cool. It's so underrated, I think, in flight sim. I may have to go there sometime soon. Uh, another good one for airliners, uh, obviously you just mentioned uh, DC and the river visual approach over in um, KDCA, that's a good one. Um, where else could you take an airliner that's really interesting in North America? Oh, oh, uh, Juneau, Alaska. A lot of people already know about that one, but don't, don't, don't sleep on it. Juneau, Alaska, which is, uh, what's the name of it? P. Papa Alpha Juliet November. Uh, also a place very, you know, it's very normal to fly airliners into this airfield, very short airfield, very challenging approach. It comes right over a mountain. I think it has like a, what do you call it, LDV or something like that approach. It's like not exactly an ILS. It's like an offset localizer. It's really weird. Um, very, very fun. Cool. You fly 737s, A320s, Dash 8s in there. Um, let's see. Let's move over to Europe now. Uh, obviously, Gibraltar is a very popular place to go to. I'm trying to like skip over the obvious ones, but Gibraltar is obviously one. Uh, Innsbruck is another obvious one people like to fly to. Um, another one that people have been, I think people sleep on, is a place called, is it, is it this one? Is it the one? Yeah, Salzburg. We went there on our F1 tour last year. So much fun. It's over in Austria. Lima, Oscar, Whiskey, Sierra. Great little field. Uh, you can fit some pretty big planes in there, but it's a very tricky um, approach. It looks straightforward, but it's tricky. Um, Aspen is a good one. You know, yeah, I think airliners, I think CRJ is flying there. I think 320 is flying there too. Yeah, so Aspen's a good one. I love flying in Aspen. Um, oh yes, Key West. Yes, yes. Thank you, Drew. LPV is what it's called. LPV approach. Make sure we're still in the flight plan. We're doing a lot of turning. Yeah, we're good. All right, how are we doing? We are... 17 minutes from top of the sense. I gotta hurry with this these airports I'm talking about. Uh what else? this is so many man. There's so Oh, what's that airport in Greece? There is an airport in Greece that I love flying into. I think it's called Thessaloniki. Yep, that's what it's called. Thessaloniki, Lima, Golf, Tango, Sierra, L G T S. Hope somebody's writing these down. <laughs> LGTS is another great destination to fly to in the world. Um, let, me give, let me see if I can find you guys some hidden gems that you might not know to go to. So that's one of them. I think that Greece airport was a good hidden gem. Um, there's some places over in northern Norway or Finland that's really fun to fly. Like pretty much all of them are good. Uh, let's go over to like Australia. I like the Gold Coast approach and the Gold Coast on the uh, east coast of, of uh, what's this place called? <laughs> east coast of Australia, as well as another place, another place called, uh, it's pronounced Cairns, but it looks like Cairns, um, Cairns Airport, <laughs> YBCS, another great place to fly to, a lot of really fun, beautiful approach. Obviously, New Zealand, uh, Wellington, is it? Yeah, Wellington, New uh, November, Zulu Whiskey November. Oh my god, you will not regret going there. NZWN, Wellington Airfield. Um, and you can fly, I think you can fly airliners into that. Um, uh, there's, uh, obviously, there's some really good ones in China. What's the one that at one airport in China where you land like over top of uh, like a city and stuff? You guys know what I'm talking about? 
Kaitech. Yes, that's the one I was trying to I was getting to. Kaitech. We need to go there. I don't know if I've ever streamed flying into Kaitech. We need to fly to Kaitech. Um, I gotta find out exactly where it is and what else is near it. But those are really good. Uh, there's so many. It's such a long list. I can I can get into man. Such a long list. All right, let's go ahead and set our bottom altitude. The aircraft will descend for us on its own when we get to our top of the descent. Again, we just have to manage the speed. I'm gonna go down to, uh, we'll go down to 5,400. I'm gonna scroll my altitude wheel down to around 5,400. And now, uh, my in-flight entertainment is gonna be watching this, uh, so, uh, so tomorrow, we will be flying DCS World, right? I'm gonna try to do that you know, on Fridays for the near, for you know, up into the near future. Not sure how long we'll do it. We'll keep doing it until I don't want to do it anymore, or we get busy. Um, so we we'll do DCS tomorrow. But this trailer, I'm about to show you guys that I hopefully don't get copywritten for. Uh, we'll, uh, it's, yeah, Jeremy, Marcel, thank you so much for the sub. Welcome aboard, my friend. Welcome to the blue team. Welcome, welcome, welcome. But um, this trailer is a new map coming to DCS World. We've known about this map, um, but this is the first time getting to see what it looks like. Uh, and this map is the Afghanistan map for DCS. Now we know a lot of the current modern conflicts have happened uh, in Afghanistan. And so a lot of people in the DCS community are very excited about this because this will, this will allow us to kind of um, create some realistic scenarios based on modern day combat in Afghanistan um, so yeah so that's what this trailer is about so I'm gonna quickly bring this over to the screen and we'll watch it together uh, for those who are interested in DCS and if you're not then just enjoy the beautiful scenery because it looks gorgeous from the screenshot uh, let me see if I can get this on screen for you guys again this will only be shown on on uh, this will only be shown on uh, YouTube Switch, not on TikTok. Let me go ahead and bring over this stuff. Lamar, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. I should do KISP. KISP, it sounds familiar. Is that Block Island? What is that place again? Simbit World, what's up, man? How you doing, bro? Welcome aboard, bro. I know that uh, I'm looking forward to the next episode of uh, my Simbit World series, and a lot of people in chat are also looking forward to the next part of the series. And I've so far, I've been hearing a lot of people really enjoying it, too is always good to hear from my perspective. All right, I'm gonna bring over uh, this trailer. We're gonna watch this as our in-flight entertainment before we do our top of the scent. Let me slide over to display cap and let's see. And we'll make it small because I don't wanna, just in case, <laughs> you know, just, just in case copyright. <laughs> just in case copyright, we'll make it small. All right, let's play it, no sound. I'm obviously gonna watch this again when the stream's over. Long Island, that's where it is. There's my jet. Wow, look at those mountains. Man. That looks like Microsoft Flight Sim. No load, no, no lie, it looks like Microsoft Flight Sim. There's the Falcon, F-16, F-15 Eagles. A10, 14. Man, look at that. Wait, that was a Chinook. Hold up. That's a new look at the Chinook. Also coming to uh, DCS, hopefully very soon. Another shot of the Chinook from the door. And there's another shot of it. Man, the mountains in Afghan Afghanistan, man, it's just, it's sad that, you know, we've had so many conflicts out there because Afghanistan is really a, like a, a pretty place. Very scenic, really nice. Look at all those mountains out there. Wow, look at the trees. That is so cool. I mean, when you look at trailers like this, it's like, this is why I love DCS right here. Wow. 
Oh, that is a sick shot. I need to learn to do that proper bombing. Come on, release date. Pre-order now. What? Coming June? What is it right now? See, this is why, this right here is why they need to be at freaking Flights to Expo. All aboard! This is exactly why they need to be at Flights to Expo. Man, that looked good. That looked really good. The scenery in DCS just keeps getting better and better. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, what do you guys think, chat? you think I'm looking forward to it I'm glad it's coming like sooner than later it's only a couple months away I think ooh Truckee yeah Truckee is a good place to fly to as well uh, do I have any t wait hold on let me make sure I'm in the right part of the chat here we go what's up Hackle welcome to the stream man hope you're doing well you're about to hit your top of the sense into Calgary Air Canada 232. I hope you have a nice landing, bro. Hope you have a nice landing. Uh, where am I flying to next? We only have one flight today. We're flying into Newark, and that's it. We call it a day right there. Uh, we'll be flying again tomorrow, but we'll be we'll be flying to targets tomorrow rather than destinations. That is the plan. Then we'll be back on Microsoft Flight Sim again next week. I can't believe it's already Thursday, man. This week has just flown by. It really just flown by. Uh, how much is the CRJ? I don't know. Uh, you can get it off of the Aerosoft website. Um, you could also get it... Actually, I think you can get it from Microsoft's Marketplace. Uh, it's not too expensive, though. It's pretty good price. I think it's worth it. My personal opinion. You just get which version you want. If you want like the 700, the 900, or the uh, 500. Uh, today we're flying the 900, the longer version. There's also the 1000 too. Let's go outside. So true, Christopher says, the land is always beautiful. It's the people that make it evil. That is so true, man. So true about anywhere in the world. Yeah, you can see the clouds up ahead. We got some pretty nasty weather about to fly into. Yeah, Marco, I agree, man. I think it's gonna be a very popular map. I'm not sure how large they're gonna make it, but I think it's gonna be a very popular map. How far are we now? We are four minutes away from our top of descent, chat. Just actually six minutes, 56 miles. But yeah, it looks, looks incredible, that, that map for DCS. Looks incredible. Makes me excited about, makes me excited about playing DCS tomorrow. It's so funny because like the scenery that we have right now for DCS is really good, but we don't pay that much attention to it because we're just focused on not dying, <laughs> you know? We're just focused on not getting shot out of the sky. So for our arrival into Newark, we are expecting the, looks like the Williamsport 3 arrival. And we're also expecting zero four rights. Um, we may or may not get an ATC. I don't know. Uh, we're kind of in the area of a few different. I think New York is on, but I don't know if they control. It's so weird the airspace. Oh, so Boston is on. So New York is not online. Boston is online. Yeah, so we would we would need New York to be online for us to get coverage. It looks like. 
yeah, the airspace in this area is really weird. Like, New York, Boston, and D.C. all kind of come together uh, in a small little area just outside of New York. Uh, what is going to be my next train in Train Sim World? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I know that uh, I heard that Run 8, Run 8 got an update. It's another train simulator. So I'll probably be checking that out here soon. I think I updated it right before today's live stream. So I don't know if I'll get, have time to mess with it today, but I'll mess with it when I get time to. Mess with it when I can. Yeah, that's exciting. New map for DCS. That's pretty cool. Hopefully we'll get the Chinook too. Just as soon. That's what I'm really looking, waiting and looking for. That's what we're all waiting for. Uh, am I going to go live on ATS, American Truck Sim? You know, I almost did an American Truck Sim stream yesterday. I almost did. I was really close to doing an American Truck Sim stream yesterday. Um, but I decided not to. Um, it was going to be last minute. And uh, the things that I had to do to get that stream ready, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it later. Uh, is this Rex Seasons? Yes, I am using Rex Seasons. Yep. Uh, NC Daggett, can we do a giveaway? Sure, if you pay for it. You pitching in? <laughs> but no, I don't have any plans for a giveaway today. We just chilling. Chilling and flying. Chilling and flying. Let's check if we can hit our descent now. Three minutes in counting. Hey, we're always doing giveaways if you guys are covering the cost. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, I want to do another American Truck Sim stream. Um, I, I really want to do it yesterday, but like I said, uh, there's a few things I have to do to get it prepared and ready, and I just I didn't. I was like, yeah, by the time I do all that, I, I won't want to do it anymore, so... But I'm ready. I want to show off the uh, the Moza wheel some more. Been really enjoying driving American Trucks in with the Moza uh, trucking wheel. It's been a lot of fun. So, been been wanting to do a live stream with that. All right. Well, before we descend, we can get things ready, or a couple of things ready. So, for when we or not for, but when we are when when we arrive in Newark, as I said, we're expecting runway zero for right. Uh, that's going to be a localizer frequency of 108.7. And go over here and drop in one. Let's see. 108.7. Put that in nav one. That's good to go. Our CRS will be 039. I don't, actually don't know where we put that, if anywhere. And then our decision height is going to be just basically 100 feet over the ground. And we're going to need that because. It is going to be completely IFR flying into Newark today. So we got to be on top of it. We got to definitely be on top of it with this plane or it can get away with us pretty fast. Am I excited for Nebraska and Arkansas for American Truck Sim? I'm excited for a new map. Yeah, I am. I'm excited. I've been uh, enjoying Oklahoma, been enjoying. What's the other one that came out? Um, Kansas on American Truck Sim, so looking forward to extending the American Truck Sim map even more. Been seeing all the teasers that uh, SCS has been posting, so uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm like, all right, stop teasing. Let's just let's get it out. Let's, let's start using it. Uh, you can see right here on our screen, it shows TOD, so that's top of top descent. And 10 miles in less than a minute. I'll show you how the aircraft descends on its own. Drewski, what's up, man? No problem at all, man. No problem. You definitely want to go back and watch the uh, takeoff all with the sound pack. Uh, that was that was nice. That was real nice. Thank you so much, Rocky River Ranch, for the subscription. Welcome to the blue team, my friend. Welcome aboard. Thanks for flying along with us today. Right, here's a countdown. Six. Five. Yeah, it's kind of like... Kind of like Boeing, how it descends on its own. 
but again you do have to manage the speed so it does not auto throttle for you you have to manually throttle uh, as we descend uh, I should try a Seto Corsa I have a Seto Corsa uh, I've done more than try it <laughs> I have it installed I've been using it so yeah I've, I've used it a lot actually so I play a Seto Corsa uh, both Assetto Corsa and Assetto Corsa Competizione. And I Racing and Le Mans Ultimate. Bro, I'm a sim racer. If you don't know that about me, I am also a sim racer. Um, I'm racing every day now. <laughs> Alright, it should descend here. So watch our vertical speed right here. Make sure we're still in VNAV. Oh, we're not. That's why. Oh, yeah, we are. Okay, so what was. Why are you not descending? Should start descending on its own, or else I'm a liar. There it is. Just switched over. Or maybe not. It's not descending. Why not? Yeah, it's supposed to be. Let's just turn VNAV on and back off. Oh wait, it wasn't on. <laughs> I thought it was on. The lights were on. That's weird. Like the lights were on, but they were like dim. So I'm gonna bring my power back, 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 back. I can show you the throttle cam, so I'm gonna have to manage it. My throttles are pull coming back, basically back to idle. I wanna keep around 280 knots on the descent. So as long as you have VNAV selected, it will descend on its own. Apparently, I did not have it selected. I did not have it selected, so I did not descend. There it is. It's descending. Uh, I might give it a little bit of power, or else it'll slow down too much. Yep, for YA Afghanistan, here I come. <laughs> I think all of us in DCS will be doing a pretty long tour in Afghanistan here soon. All right, it's descending. It's doing its thing. It's doing its thing. Uh, you own Train Sim World Three. Is it worth it to upgrade to Train Sim World Four if you get it on sale? Yes, and I think it's on sale right now. So get it while it's on sale. But if it's not on sale, I can't say that it may be worth the full price. Um, kind of depends on how much you like the new routes. How far are we from New York? We are about 20 minutes out. So not far at all. About 110 miles to go. Hackle, you have the default thrust mounts. Yeah, so these uh, thrust levers are from uh, another third party company called Sierra Delta. And they make mods. Uh, for the honeycomb throttle and for the Thrustmaster Boeing throttle. And so it's much larger, as you can see. It feels a lot more realistic. It is still plastic. It's 3D printed, um, so it's not heavy. But um, as far as the size and scale you get putting your hands on it, it feels a lot more realistic than, than the old ones. Thank you, J Aviation. Welcome to the street. Uh, it also has a couple extra buttons. It has a thrust for, uh, reverse lever on it, and it has a, what do you call it, um, a toga switch and uh, auto throttle disconnect as well. So. It's pretty cool what they've done. Yeah, look at the look at the weather that we are flying into now. So enjoy the blue sky for a little bit longer because we ain't gonna see nothing when we get under these clouds. A uh, link. It's supposed to be in the description. It's not there for some reason. Me, I gotta find it again. Hold on. I have a, uh, I think I have a review 
that I did at the throttle. So what I'm doing right now is looking for that review. <laughs> Uh, and the link is in there, but I can get it for you as soon as I find it. Here it is. Yeah, I meant to put that link in um, in here anyways. Yeah, actually, matter of fact, I, I have a 10% discount. So if you are interested in getting this throttle that I'm using, uh, the throttle mod, uh, you can get 10% off with my code. I forgot about that. <laughs> so I'm going to drop that in the description. Or not description, in the description, uh, in the chat. And you can check it out for yourself. He has a bunch of other stuff on there, too. Bunch of mods. Does a good job. Does a really good job. And let me update my YouTube video, because I need to have that in there, too. I updated. There you go, Hackle. Hopefully that helps you, man. Tyler Rocks, welcome back. Good to see you, man. It is about to get nasty, Data. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But this right here is why we flight sim. It is getting to fly into challenging airports, challenging weather. This is why we sim right here. That's what we live for. Uh, did I see the autopilot from Winwing? I did see it. Um, I did not order it, but it looks good. I already have the mini FCU, so I don't need to. I have not heard anything from Winwing either to review it, so I don't have plans on buying it myself. But it looks good. If I do get access to it, I'll definitely give it a try and I'll let you know what I think about it and how it compares. But um, it looks promising. It's also cheaper than the other one too, so. It's kind of like a no-brainer. If you're looking for if you're looking for something like that, if you're looking for something like that, then it's pretty easy purchase because it's cheaper, and Winwing is a pretty respected company. So, can a GTX 1650 run this game? That is a great question. Uh, on a laptop with a GTX 1650, that's a great question. I'm not sure chat could you help me out with this one anybody who's uh, any computer people in chat could help me out can you play microsoft flight sim with a laptop that runs a gtx 1650 um i want to say not not great <laughs> but i'm not sure i'm not sure at all uh z lively vids welcome back to the stream how you doing man you live in jersey city it is raining slightly yeah we're expecting rain when we get down there Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I know that's pretty... That's, you're definitely not going to be able to run on max or high settings. With that piece, with that laptop. Alright, here comes 18,000 feet. Let's find the weather in Newark, New Jersey, where we're flying to right now. Uh, get the updated weather, I should say. Updated weather is... One, uh, sorry, that's not 18, it. 18,000. Yep, there's 18,000 feet. 2991. It's now marginal VFR. So the weather, the weather is actually clearing up a little. <laughs> it was IFR completely before. Now it's marginal VFR or IFR. Let's see, I right, barrow to be 2991. Right, that sets. Uh, local Ghost, so it says that laptop should handle it. Uh, give it a try. The best thing you could do, uh, it is on Game Pass, so you could download it from Game Pass and test it out, see how well it works for your computer and your settings and all that, and then maybe after that, if it works pretty well, you can dedicate more time to it. Uh, how often do I stream on Twitch? Uh, I stream on Twitch anytime I'm streaming on YouTube. I'm also live on Twitch uh, and also live on TikTok, and I lately... I usually stream twice a week, but the last few weeks I've been streaming like three, uh, three days a week. I think this week we we did Tuesday, Thursday, and then we're gonna do tomorrow. I almost did Wednesday, uh, fourth day, and I think last week we did do four live streams. Uh, could I fly an actual Boeing 
if I were given the opportunity, I would try. <laughs> I think I could, but um, there might be some stuff that I'm, I don't know. And but the thing is, you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah, you, you gotta remember that a seven three seven, even a CRJ is a uh, a multi crew aircraft. It takes two people to fly it and handle all the all the buttons and radio and all the stuff that happens with it. So to fly it by yourself uh, would be pretty overwhelming. But I think I could I, I think I could be a part of the crew for sure. I mean, I did go to the uh, Boeing flight simulator last year. Or not the actual Boeing, but I went to a Boeing flight simulator last year. I right, bring the power back just a little bit as we're um, still descending and gaining a bit of speed. All right, looking good so far. Cloud surfing on our way into New Jersey. Yes, Kevin, it's the Aerosoft CRJ 900. Now, yes, we are expecting rain in New Jersey. Uh, what do I think about the CRJ? Is it worth it? Great question. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you like CRJs. <laughs> I think it's worth it. I think it's a good plane. You know, it's not study level. It's not like... I wouldn't say it's the same quality as a Phoenix A320 or even the PMDG. I would say it's a step underneath that. But I think it's still a perfectly good plane to fly in Microsoft Flight Sim. It does have some quirks to it. Um, some of them are from the Sim and many of them are just how CRJs are flown. Again, uh, it's pretty manual. There's no auto throttle. So that's one thing that's tough for some people to manage when they first get into a CRJ from, you know, a Boeing or an A320. So keep that in mind. Make sure you're okay with that. There's the speed brakes. Uh, does a throttle kit come with the flap notches? Uh, great question. Uh, make sure you're getting 10, the kit. I think each throttle can be sold separately. So if you're trying to get this, make sure you're, uh, if you want the whole thing, not the actual throttle. The throttle itself you gotta get from Thrustmaster, right? But the mod, uh, you can get the two throttle levers um, and the flaps and the speed brake, I think as a pack. I'd have to look at that, but uh, I do believe they're also sold separately. So just make sure uh, that you're getting the right, the right thing. Uh, check what's included in the package you're buying. There's also some other things that he has, like a, like a fuel cutoff lever that can hang off here, which is pretty interesting. All right, how are we looking? Come up on sweet. Uh, from there, we'll go direct to our approach. Find out where that is. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna get rid of that discontinuity. Let's get some power. We're a little too slow. I'm gonna go down to the next page. We'll click on Kilma. And we'll put that here. And we'll click on that, put that there, and execute that. Alright, there we go. Alright, so we'll put 2,800 as our bottom out to... Again, with this aircraft, you gotta stay ahead of it. Um, it'll, get, it'll get away from you. If, uh, if you just hang around. But make sure that you are... Doing that. So you can see, you gotta watch the speed. Our speed is getting too slow now. We're going 190 knots at 8,000 feet. Uh, we obviously don't want to be any faster than 250 knots low 10,000 feet, but we don't need to be doing 200, uh, 190 at this altitude. But VNAV is doing pretty good. It's, it's managing our altitude, bringing us down, um, and making helping make sure that we meet our altitude restrictions and things like that. So that's, that's good. We've already programmed the ILS, so that's ready to go. Yes, Local Ghost, I am on Twitch as well. And YouTube. Yeah, this is the thing, man. These the Airbus and the 737, they spoil us, man. They do. 
New Hapanese CRJs, these ERJs, even the business jets and GA planes. It's uh, it's it's manual, man. Look at that that sail over there. Look at that. I'm looking forward to how Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 draws weather. I'm looking forward to that. Hey, right, we need speed. A lot more speed. You can see rain down there too. You see that? Uh, do I just direct to the first waypoint of the approach? I just did. Um, we're flying uh, the entire arrival, so the aircraft flew the arrival. But in this particular case, the arrival and the approach don't have like they don't link automatically. It expects you to get vectors from ATC. So in my case, I I made like a direct line between the end of the arrival and the beginning of the approach. That's what that line is. Right, we're at 240 knots. We're being powered back. Looking good, guys. We're on a uh, left base now for a Newark. I agree with you, man. I wish Xbox could do more uh, with Microsoft Flight Sim, but it's really it's really just a a limitation of the console, sadly. I mean, the good thing is we, you are you are getting more aircraft now. You're getting more uh, more options for mods and things like that on uh, on Xbox, but it's still way behind compared to PC. Look at that airport right there. Look at that shirt. That'd be pretty fun to land on. That'd be pretty cool to land on. Johnny G Audio, welcome to stream, man. How much to get into this? To get a setup, you're trying to get into Microsoft Flight Sim soon, or Flight Simming. So, uh, so first, obviously, you need to get Flight Sim. Choose a Flight Sim. So you can either do Microsoft Flight Sim, which is what we're playing right now, or you can do X Plane, or you could do P3D. What's up, Leonardo? Welcome to the stream. Pilot Mateo, welcome to the stream. Um, so that you choose your sim, right? First, regardless what sim you play, you can choose controls. So what controls I'm using today is the Thrustmaster TCA Yoke, uh, the Thrustmaster Boeing Throttle. I actually have two of the throttles that I've linked together. It gives me six axes. I'm only using four of them right now, so I have two extra ones here. Bunch of buttons down here. I have a throttle mod. Um, I have the TPR pedals down here, which is about 500 by itself. I think this this yoke is, was it 400, guys? 400, 500, something like that. Um, and that comes with the throttle, uh, one throttle. The chair that I'm sitting in right now, uh, made by Next Level Racing, is, uh, how much is this chair? I don't remember. It's a lot. <laughs> it's like 800 or close to it, something like that. It's it's up there. Um, I think that's it, really. I have this navigation panel or radio panel that's also optional. But uh, if you're interested in what I have in my setup, again, in the description of the YouTube video, uh, you can see exactly what all I'm using. Uh, you could also, if you're watching on TikTok, there's uh, links on my profile uh, to all the uh, websites and whatnot. So, uh, but I do have, I think I wanna say, I have 5% off the chair, 10% off the throttle mod. I wanna say 15, but I don't wanna misquote, might be 10% off of the, the yoke uh, or anything from Thrustmaster. I think that still works. Um, so yeah, don't pay full price if you don't have. Don't pay full price if you don't have to. Eight hundred, thank you, Data. The chair is seven ninety nine. All right, what is the CTAF for Newark? I don't like CTAF. I really don't like CTAF. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I, I want to go back to the, the the regular Unicom. I get that it's more realistic, but like I feel like I'm talking to my freaking self. Even though on Unicom, I'm probably talking to myself too, but at least I know there's people in the area. All right, what is uh, the thing? Dot. A-E-W-R. I'm only doing because I'm trying to be a good example. 
one eight point three. That's the same as it was in Cincinnati. And we're getting nice and close. We are about twenty miles away. So zoom in. I'm gonna get the replay going as well. Uh, for my replay tool, I use a program called Flight Control Replay. My preferred way to record my landing replays works pretty good for me all right that's saved uh camera in ctaf is i believe common traffic advisory frequency uh in real life in the united states every airport has a a basically a unicom uh, specific to either that airport or to the that area of airports and so right now on VATSIM they're doing a test uh, for the next few months or forever um, actually using their real world uh, unicom frequencies for the specific areas and specific airports um, the problem that I have with that is that unless like right now when I talk on CTAF which is the local Unicom. The only way you could hear me is if you're flying like into Newark or on the same frequency. And you're only going to be on the same frequency if you're in or around Newark. And right now it's not busy, so most likely nobody's going to hear me. If I was on regular Unicom, uh, anybody from freaking here to Pittsburgh <laughs> uh, would hear me. Um, so it's just a bit more of a finer radio frequency thing. Uh, head to Newark. Uh, Sean, head to Newark. Yes, this is the Aerosoft CRJ. It's been a long time. It's been two years since we've flown this bird. Two freaking years since we have flown this bird. So uh, we're back in it and checking out this new sound pack. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn the sounds back up now uh, as we're about to descend and land into Newark, New Jersey. Does it get a little loud in here? We're still descending. Do I recommend the Logitech SciTech Pro? Uh, not really. Um, if that's all you can afford, then go for it. But there's better options for flight controls now. Much better. I can't remember how much a SciTech costs. Where are we landing? What room are we landing on? Alright, my land lights on? Yep, they are. It's going to be interesting. We're not going to see anything else until we land. Oh, actually, no. We can see things. Yes, Honeycomb, Bravo, and Alpha are good to get started. But so are the Thrustmasters. Yeah, it's kind of hard to beat $107. <laughs> it's hard to beat it. But if you're going to be flight something for an extended time, you're going to want to eventually upgrade that. So, yeah. Uh, yes, I do have GSX. I use it on every single flight. Every single flight. All right, we're doing 200 knots right now, and on the left downwind runway, runway four right. Newark traffic, Endeavor 116, left base, four right, Newark. Yeah, Turtle Beach has one as well. Um, that's tough. It's a bit more expensive, though. 
but you also get a throttle with it. Alright, let's get some flaps. Uh, can you use the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant and Yoke with the same seat that I use? Yes, you can. It was made for that. Uh, my only uh, complaint is the Bravo Throttle sits a bit too far back. So, like, I would mount it in the same place as this is on this panel. But I had to reach my hand way back here to control. Like, it's like back here to control the throttle. And it's kind of inconvenient. It works. Uh, but it's just a quirk of the Next Level Racing uh, Boeing chair. Now, the newer chair, the Flight Sim, uh, I think called the Pro, uh, on that one, it's in a bit of a better position, uh, but that chair is also broken into two different pieces. All right, let's go ahead and go approach mode on. I can't see anything. Are we above it or are we below it? I don't know. All right, it's right here. I have flaps with 20 right now. We are 10 miles. Newark traffic, oh, Endeavor 116, 10 mile final four ride, Newark. Thank you, John, for the sub. Welcome to the blue team, my friend. Hope you're doing well. And wish me luck on this landing. This is gonna be a spicy one, this. Get some lighting in the cockpit. Uh, I just hope the ILS works. That's all I want is the ILS to work. I need it. Alright, nozzle steering, armed, thrust reversers, armed. Got a little bit more lighting in here. I think it's all I gotta do. And let's watch our speed and hope that the glide slope captures. I change the source. Yep, look one. Wow, Mateo, you're flying from LA to Singapore? Nice, that's a long flight. Yep, there it is. I can see things. I can see things. It's gonna slow down nicely. Oh, this is gonna be dope. I can't wait to see this replay. Listen to the engines, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Alright, well, it looks like it failed to catch the glass. Look. Gears coming down. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it, it caught it. It did not. Alright, my controls. I got a little bit of visual of the lights. I'm landing it. Oh yeah, we're high. We brakes. Alright, we're basically visual now. I think the reason why I didn't capture it is because I hit approach mode, but I didn't hit nav mode. That's my guess. But I got a good look at it now. All right, we're low now. Five hundred. Four hundred. All right, we're very low. And getting a little bit of rain too. Yep, it's raining. 200. 
One. Power, power. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Hold it. Down. Got the reverses. All right, we made it. We made it into rainy Newark. Parking today, guys. Newer traffic. Uh, Endeavor 116 is crossing for left. However, your laptop computers and larger electronics must remain stowed. We invite you to visit Delta.com for all your future travel needs, including checking in for a flight and managing your Scat Miles accounts. Yep, don't call it a nice landing until we see the replay. You have <laughs> but thank you guys, appreciate it. Claim. Or any other information? The triple seven. How many of you guys are excited for the triple seven for Microsoft Flight Sim and for X Plane? Oh yeah, I can't freaking like wait, man. I can't wait. And look forward to the opportunity to serve you once again. Alright, where does Delta Park in thank Newark? You so much. Have a wonderful evening. I see United. I see a lot of United. I don't see any Delta. For arrival, please cross check and I'll call. I want to say it's probably on the other side of this terminal. That's my guess. <laughs> you were sitting in 4A and your landing took me to the C24D. No refunds, man. I got you here. My question is, but did you die? Yeah, I would, I would love to see an A222, man. That's something I am excited to see. It's, you know, I mean, honestly, we, we're getting a lot of great aircraft. We already have a lot of great aircraft in Microsoft Flight Sim, thankfully. Um, look, another 777. But I am uh, still looking forward to an A220 Microsoft, for Microsoft Flight Sim. All right, land lights off. APU's coming on. Uh, Nathaniel says A gates. All right, let me find out where the heck that is. I feel like I probably went the wrong direction. But let me find out. A gates. Alright, where's terminal A? Yep. We went the wrong way. We're going to Seagate. Crap. My chart says that the A gates are closed. Is that, is that correct? Is that right? I guess we'll turn around and see. Uh, Mark, welcome back to the stream, man. Good to see you. Uh, what mod is this traffic? This is called FSLTL. Uh, it's on PC only, like most mods, sadly, uh, for my Xbox people. But uh, it's free. It comes with the fly-by-wire installer. So if you have the fly-by-wire A320 and you have that installer installed, uh, you can also get access to the FSLTL. And it's all free AI traffic. Uh, as well as uh, free, um, it's free model matching. So if I'm on VatSim, it uses the same models 
that we have here uh, as AI traffic for um, for multiplayer traffic as well. Uh, when is the next episode for Simbit World? It will be Monday. Monday is a plan. All if all goes as planned, it will come out on Monday, and uh, we'll also announce our giveaway winner. If you don't know anything about the giveaway, then you need to watch the last video to find out why. <laughs> don't you hit me, seven three seven. Don't you hit me. I'm a CRJ. I'm more important. Oh, he hit me anyways. Freaking pilots. And now in the B gates. Copy that. Nathaniel will park in B then. And my chart says that A is closed. I don't know how up to date that is or how correct that is, but what does park in B? You're very welcome, Mark. You are very welcome. Alright, so this is B gates. Right here. Fans, is this the international terminal? They park on last circle of B from 44 and up. Copy that. Thank you. Bravo one. Yep, I see some. Uh, I see some domestic planes out here. Good, good, good. Thanks for the help, Nathan, Nathaniel. Look at that plane taking off. Yep, there's a Delta CRJ. Uh, any tips for butter landings? Great question. Uh, I don't feel like the right person to ask that because my butter landings are inconsistent. I personally feel like I get lucky every time. Uh, I would say practice is one way. <laughs> um, one way to get better landings is to practice landing in that particular plane. Uh, every plane handles differently. Come on. The click spots in this plane suck. Yeah, we'll park right here next to the uh, other Delta. Uh, what gate is this? This is, uh, let's say. 46 Bravo. Let's see if we can get ground crew here. Forty-six Bravo. Uh, another way is uh, make sure to set yourself up for success and not failure. Don't try to land last minute off of a really bad approach. We'll use a uh, Swiss port. Uh, know your landing speeds, know your approach speeds, have all that you know, set up beforehand. Alright, we should have a marshaller here. I don't see him. Oh, he's in the freaking wall. Okay.
we're all parked up. Brake sets. And I'm gonna leave the engines running for the replay. I'm just not sure how the uh, replay will affect the audio, whatever. So, um, to hopefully get a good sounding aircraft on the replay, I'm gonna leave the aircraft running. But normally, we'd shut it off right now, open the doors up, and deboard everybody. Uh, what am I thinking to go live on American Truck Sim? Uh, maybe we could fit in American Truck Sim stream next week. Like, Tuesday, maybe. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to do trains. I did trains le this past Tuesday. I don't have plans to do trains next week, so maybe we'll do trucking on that day instead. All right, we're getting the replay queued up. Uh, also find out what our landing rate was. Any, any guesses, chat, what our landing rate might have been on that landing? Go ahead and file my pie rep here with Delta Virtual. All right, that's good. I clear some things off of my screen, you know what I mean? I tell you, when I do these live streams, I got like freaking 20 tabs open. No, no lie, 20 tabs, yes. Um, of just various things running in the background. Um, I'd love to consolidate that. <laughs> I really would. That's right, so in the flight, review the flight. Uh, you guys are guessing 20, 256. Uh, we got... That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I'm happy with, with that number. Let's get to the replay and I'll tell you what the number is. I have just clear this off. Alright, we are off that sim, so we will not disrupt anyone with our replay watching. And let's go ahead and load our flight plan. Or not flight plan, load our landing into Newark. I started the recording pretty early, so we're probably gonna be up in the clouds. Yep. Don't freeze, please. Alright, here we go. Alright, let's fast forward. Yeah, I started really early. Right, there we go. Right there should be good. You can hear the sounds here too. That was pretty solid. A little bit off the center line, but you know. First CRJ flight in two years, I'll take it. Uh, so for those who were wondering, the landing rate ends up being a 93 recorded from Volanta. So uh, now watching it back like you know that kind of makes sense. Yeah, make sure you guys uh, take the customer survey after the flight's over. Would you fly with Delta again if pilot is the flight? It's a, it, blue is a pilot. We technically landed on the center line and after touching down, kind of came over to the left. You can actually hear the brakes too. A little bit. In the sound pack. That's actually pretty impressive. Alright, let's watch it now from the left wing view. Actually, no, we'll do right wing, get the, uh, if it wasn't so cloudy, you could see New York City from here. From the right side, that's the, uh, I remember when I flew to Newark myself, seeing the docks right there and all the container ships. Go back a little bit farther, right there. Right, take, take a listen to this sound pack.
train down there. I'm not sure if you guys could hear that, but that was so cool. You could actually, as the wheels touched down, you could hear like the brakes applying. That that's something I had don't think I've ever heard in a sound pack before. That's pretty impressive. All right, from the left wing view in parallel with Air Canada. That's the first time I've ever recorded a parallel landing on Microsoft Flight Sim. That was pretty dope with the Air Canada A320. You can still hear the brakes. That is cool. Wow, that's that's detail. I like to see. All right, let's watch from uh, let's watch from the exterior view. Oh! Thank you, Freeze. I think that should be good. We'll go ahead and rewind it back and see how she looks from the outside. Hopefully not too twitchy. That's good. Look at that. You can see the bridges. Yo, hear that 737 just land? <laughs> that is sick. A little bit, Chloe. A little bit. That's why they call it a high-speed exit. I think I, I hit the exit around 60. 60 knots. It's like another plane departing at the same time, and so it was really loud. So hopefully we can get a, a gap here where we can hear our plane. Watch from behind the fence. And all 
Although I really like the uh, AI traffic and their sounds, this is about the CRJ and its sounds, and I can't hear it because the other planes are so darn loud. So we're retiring from the uh, outside the fence view. And I'm curious what the exterior like flyby sounds sound like. I heard the exterior when we were flying, but what about when it's when it's landing? Came in a bit low. Actually sound pretty good for an exterior view. It actually sound pretty good for an exterior view. Most planes in Microsoft Flight Sim just don't sound good uh, in the outside. And they were never like really meant to be heard in replay mode. So it's nice to hear this a bit better. All right, one more time. And I'll give you guys your shout outs and we'll head out of here. Again, big shout out to Boris. He made this sound pack. You can go get that sound pack on Orbix's website. Uh, you can also check out the description to go and find the sound pack if you're interested in getting the CRJ uh, and the sound pack to go with it. Go and check that out. Again, today's flight was from Cincinnati to Newark, New Jersey. Great flight. Thank you guys so much for riding and flying along with me. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Cosmic Oddity. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Christopher. Duchess, Sweet Dreams, Pilot Mateo, Kimi Raikkonen. Nathaniel. Extreme. Captain Samafa. Zach Gudatz. Cameron Evans. Data. Leonardo. Hackle. If I miss you, I apologize. Marco, thank you so much, man. Uh, we'll be going live again tomorrow, same time, same place, except we'll be doing DCS where we'll be back, most likely back in the F-18 Hornet doing some more strike missions and air-to-air -air combat. So if you're into that kind of thing, definitely come back tomorrow. I uh, would definitely love to have you. It'll be a lot of fun. I am looking forward to it. But until next time, guys, remember you have three choices. Give up, give in, give it all you got. Peace, love, and look at the scenery. God bless you. I'll see you guys next time, next video. I'm out. take that landing. I'll take it.